Hello everyone, it's been quite a while but I'm back with yet another episode of Starstruck. Jumping right in, we're basically going to be fixing all of our mistakes from the last episodes. Since you don't want to be paying too much attention to how we fix this stuff, I'll be skimming over a lot of the details. Right now we're adjusting our drill setup so that all the three modules are hooked up together, which are the storage tanks, the pump, and the drill. With that finished, we're going to pick up the rover and the tanks. This rover will actually be used for mining, so that we can transport the resources back and forth between the base and the site. We'll set it down here so we can drive directly to and from the crater mining site and the base. Now comes the fun part. We'll be separating these two fuel tanks by destroying the docking port that's held on the first one, by using the old reliable strut on a stick technique. I think that about half of this base's entire existence is due to some random parts that I found laying on the ground somewhere. It really makes you feel like this entire base is just hacked together, which in all fairness it probably is, considering that I only put parts together based on what looks good. Apart from mechanisms or other specific things, but that's generally how I build them. Some of you might have heard of function over form or form over function, and if you know what that means, then my take on it is that function equals form, or if I'm going to build something, I'm going to make it elegant so that it combines simplicity, usability, and looks. Now looking back at our module repair gig, we've been able to separate the tanks that are already at the base, and we're now separating these new tanks that came in our last flight. We'll eventually be transferring both of those tanks to the base and the refuel site on the drone port. Halfway through making this episode, I realized that I had gone far too long with just referring to this as the base, or Starstruck. So, I decided to finally come up with a name. It'll now be referred to as Solidarity Base. The reason I picked this name is because solidarity means unity or agreement of feeling or action, especially among individuals with a common interest, which in my opinion illustrates the base's purpose very well. Cause if you think about it, spaceflight is about the brilliant minds and engineers all coming together for one purpose, which is in essence to reach the stars. While it is just me who's working on the base, I still think it's very fitting to represent the spirit of spaceflight in this project. Cause this series isn't about showing off, it's about inspiring young minds, who may then become journalists, videographers, musicians, engineers. It's really not just limited to space. Even with something as simple as making a video, I think there's still a lot of fields involved regardless. Since I'm sure you're tired of my philosophy lesson, we can move our focus back to the repaired modules. We were able to finish the drill and rover setup, as well as complete the tanks in both the base and the drones. Now this leaves us just one last thing to do before we can start bringing anything new, which is just a simple reposition of this lander to make way for any new arrivals at the launch pad. I'm heading over to this crater on the far left because I want to add a little launch complex here, so I want to get a good look at the terrain so I can plan accordingly. I made a diagram using the drone for scale, so I could build it to fit the crater. To save time, I'll skip over the build portion, but right now, I'm launching the basic structure for the pad. It also includes some cool stuff in it, like hydraulics for a crane. I made a YouTube community post about that a couple of days ago, showing the blurred image of a structure. So if you were wondering what that was, it was indeed a crane. You'll get to see that in action later on in the video. Taking a look at what's happening now though, we're making our final approach for the landing pad. I find it pretty ironic that we're landing on this pad with the parts that will end up replacing it. Now that we're touched down on the lunar surface, I bring over some drones to help carry the parts over to the crater. You're gonna have to excuse my voice here a bit, if you can't tell I'm a bit sick. Since I recorded this video over the course of a couple days, I just woke up and then... Apparently I'm a bit sniffly so, you'll just have to deal with it, sorry. Flying over the base and getting to the crater, I'm not too cautious and end up going a bit too fast. So trying to have a little bit of fun with it, I have something I call Crash Count. The name is pretty self-explanatory, so if you want to, go place your bets in the comments on what the total Crash Count will be. There we just saw it go up again. Now with those little tanks in place, I'm moving over these wires to the other side. I'm using those built-in RCS drones, but they're actually supposed to serve as the bases for the structure. Since I love to make things compact, I just repurposed them for easy movement. Those RCS pods are actually detachable from them, so they shouldn't be a problem later on. Now here, I'm trying to take two of the drones to try and lift up the structure segment, because I don't think that one will cut it. 
but apparently I was wrong because two wouldn't cut it. The ion engines are just too weak to start lifting such heavy masses, so I take over a third drone. I really should start either making larger drones with more powerful engines, or just being more realistic and making the payloads themselves smaller. In fact, I've probably indirectly already done that to myself because the launch complex won't be able to support such unrealistic lander sizes anyway, and that's what I primarily plan to use from now on. Anyway, taking a look back at the actual launch complex, I realized something. I won't actually be able to use these wires. The reason for this is because when I was building the entire payload, I actually had it flipped in comparison to what I have on the moon right now. Initially, the crane would have been on the left side of the pad instead of how I have it right now, where it's on the right side. I did this because at the last minute, I saw that the crane would have had more function if it were on this side instead of how it was. So, to compensate for me flipping the crane, I actually flipped these modules that I'm carrying right now. So in my head, everything would have worked out fine. But, I had forgotten to flip those pipes modules and the wires. Since I had designed those modules to fit perfectly and dock to the structure, now that they weren't in alignment, they couldn't be used. So that's why I had to ditch those wires. I should still be able to salvage the pipes though. So far, construction has been going fine apart from those wires. Now, we're docking the right segment of the pad and its foot together. This is the segment that the crane will dock to, which will send up in another launch. With a bit of a push from a landing leg, the pillar docks right in place, to my surprise. We'll leave that segment be for the time being. Undocking these little structural segments will bring our crash count up. I think by the end of this series, it would be fair to say that the crash count is going to be somewhere up in the hundreds. Next, we're going to dock the middle segment to the rightmost one. Using a bit of a risky maneuver, we end up flipping from vertical to horizontal. Setting that down, we can shimmy our way into the docking port. I would say it's a pretty sketchy spot with all these modules in one place, but we end up docking the two together anyway. With that done, we can move on to adding the base to the leftmost module. I honestly don't know how I managed to break this part, but apparently I can. Twice. This actually leaves me in a pretty bad spot, and it renders me immobile due to only having one side of the RCS active. So, I have to switch back to the structural piece to finish docking. When that's finished, I switch over to the segment with the drones on it so I can dock the two together, then reposition it for the final docking, where I'll remove the drones and put the pad segments together. One thing I can mention about those foundations is that they have those separators on them, which means you can level yourself to the terrain. Here we are just pushing ourselves up and over the pumps, then pushing it back over so that the left side will be in its final place. And remember, since all of these modules except for the pumps were flipped, it doesn't exactly fit perfectly. At least we were able to salvage something, unlike those wires from earlier. Since I've got about 40 seconds to kill before anything else interesting happens on the screen, I guess I can talk about how I make these videos and why this one specifically took so long to make. It all starts with me recording what's in game. Oftentimes, the total file size of all those recordings can add up to gigabytes. I delete them after I'm fully finished with the video anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But when I'm done with that, I place it all into InShot, which is my current video editor. I really should start using a different one, maybe one that's on a computer rather than on my phone, because it does get pretty laggy. And I know that in the future, I'm going to need something more powerful. But for the time being, it works, so no problems as of now. I'll then take those clips and edit them so that the total duration is down to a reasonable time. I think that a good time for these videos is somewhere around 15 minutes, it's not too long and not too short. But if you have thoughts concerning that, please let me know in the comments. Alright, that's enough video editing talk, let's take a look back at our rocket. This launch is carrying the crane segments, and something interesting you might have seen about this one is that we have the moon in the background, which is a new feature that we've added to Earth Overhaul for the 1.1 update. I'll talk about that more in depth, as well as all of the other features coming in that update, when we finish all the new content for that update and I make a video on it, so make sure you're on the lookout for that. Looking back at our launch, there's something special I want to mention, and that's that we have a satellite. The intended function of this satellite is to study the lunar surface from far up. I sorta kinda stole the design I used from the Jupiter's Foundation April Fool's video, but it wasn't being put to use anyway, so I thought why not. Here I'm targeting my landing site, and I'm actually going to be aiming for the new pad that I just constructed, so it makes for easier transport, but other than that, there's nothing too special about this one. In all honesty, I should just edit the video while I'm voicing it so that I can know which parts aren't boring and which parts I need to cut out. Now, we'll be attempting our landing. In fact, we'll have many attempts.
So yeah, I ended up running out of fuel and hitting the ground at about 250 meters per second. A couple times. More than a couple times. Have I ever mentioned that litho braking is one of my favorite landing methods? The only thing it costs is your time. But now with us relatively safely on the ground, we're able to start assembling the crane. I start by bringing the drone stack over. When I was building, I put a place for the drones to dock to so that I could move it around. This is also coming from the same person who thought that two drones was going to be enough to lift the entire structure, so just keep that in mind. Since we don't even have that much fuel, I'm going to go back to the tried and tested method, the worm maneuver, except this time around I'm more desperate. I didn't even know that it was possible that I could crash this much in such a small time frame. Life seems to be full of surprises now, but if the parts can still function, I'm fine with it. I'm just glad the parts are- I'm just glad I made the pad out of struts, otherwise I would be breaking it up right now. Also, I detached that fuel tank intentionally so that I can actually dock the thing, so it's technically not a crash, but the point is, we're here. Now we can move the crane's base over to this other side, and then dock it together. Luckily, I didn't run into any problems regarding that, so that was a win for me. And now we get to start putting things together. Since I had built it to be really compact in the fairing, that means that it becomes a package deal with a fairly complicated assembly process. The crane itself is made up of four main parts. First, there's the actual tower itself. What's connected to that next is a hinge, which then connects to the jib, or I think that's the technical term for it. It's basically what drives all the up and down motion, since you can't really make any real winches or cables, especially not at this scale. So with the jib pivoting up and down, there's also a slide mechanism that will take care of the horizontal movement. The little car thing can slide back and forth, while the quote-unquote cable stays on its pivot. While I'm getting it to work, you can already see how functional it could be. I used the probes there for more torque, but it kind of resembles the counterweights on a tower crane. Also, one thing to note. While I'm moving these drones out, it kind of looks like it's a gun, and it kind of functions like one, but I promise it's not a gun. Some of you guessed that. It's not. Anyways, I don't know if there's any real-life counterpart for this kind of crane as it's not very structurally stable, especially because it's using a hinge without any other support. So the mechanical design could be original for all I know, but I haven't looked into it very much. Now with the crane finally set up, we can launch our first standardized lander. It'll be carrying an energy cell since we're only running on two small solar panels. And this time around, it'll be a more realistic size since we actually have to land it on the pad. If I'm being honest, this is probably the best looking upper stage I've ever made. It has a cool orange stripe and the little bulkhead looks very nice, in my opinion, of course. I just think it looked pretty nice even if I wasn't exactly trying to get it to look nice. What's still most important is its function. Skipping over to our moon burn, we're not going to be using all of the fuel from the second stage. It'll be crashed far away from the base, but the rest of the work will have to be done by the lander. Here, I'm going to start deploying those legs, and I had to get them to dock using this kind of overcomplicated system so that it would actually fit in the fairing, but it wasn't that bad in the end. Yes, those upper legs are actually no clip. You can try it for yourself by putting two large landing leg bases together. It did serve to make a cool landing leg design, so there's that. After a lot of fiddling with those docking ports, they eventually get together, and we can now make our approach for a landing. I just think this is cool, like you can't tell me that's not cool. Of course it's cool, you're landing on the moon right next to a crane. I think what I'll do is land several of these landers and then put them all on the left side of the pad, so that you could potentially put payloads on them with the crane and then launch them up again. There you can see the crane doing its job perfectly. It's able to smoothly pick up payloads and actually in my testing with all of these probes, can lift up to 100 tons, which is more than I'll really ever need. With such a wide range of motion on the hinge, you can easily pick up and set down these modules. Another cool feature of the crane is that if you want to launch and you're directly under it, you can just set it to the most upright position and you should be able to have enough clearance. But yeah, overall I'm really pleased at how this turned out. It functions great, it looks great, and it's great to handle as well. Not to mention the practicality of having all of these landers at the ready. More expansion can come to this pad area as we grow Solidarity Base, and I'm just really excited to see where this could go. With enough effort put into it, we could be working like a well-oiled machine up here. That's all I have to offer for you today. As always, be sure to leave your feedback in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Starstruck, and I hope you have a nice day.